This is our eleventh and final lesson on building this gear housing. While we've finished our structural and cosmetic work, we've just got one thing left to do. We're going to split the solid and export the solid bodies as separate files. Let's begin by activating the split tool. Let's select the split solid option. Now we set the split tool. I'll use the YZ plane and click OK. In the Solid Bodies folder, we can see that we've got two solids now. Here we might be a bit ahead of ourselves, actually, since we haven't yet studied assembly. So I'm going to give you an overview of how, from this point, we can create an assembly. Let's begin by right-clicking on Solid 2. Here's the Export Object option. If you don't export the solid now, Inventor's just going to prompt us later on. So let's not export the object right now. OK, let's go to the Manage tab. Click on Make Part. And lo and behold, here's the prompt I was just talking about. Let's click OK. The Make Part dialog window opens. Now since we selected the solid previously, it's already pre-selected here for us. To unselect it, you can just click the plus sign. Here's the export prompt again. Let's just click OK. At this point, we specify the part name. I'm going to call it 72-1. Down below, we can place the part in a target assembly. For more information about the Make Part Routine, do take a look at our Inventor Assembly course, Lesson 25. At this point, I'm going to click OK. Now we're in the assembly environment. Our part was imported, and it was also grounded. That's what's indicated by this pin symbol. When a part is grounded, it means the part can't be moved. However, it's easy to unground a part. Just right-click and scroll down to ground it. Now I can move my part freely. Let's ground the part again. Right-click, ground it. Now when I try to grab and drag the part around, I can't. The grounding symbol, the pin, appears next to my cursor. Inventor created this assembly, but it's not yet saved, so let's go ahead and do that. Click OK. And let's go back to our original part. Now I'm going to right-click on Solid 3 and select Export Object. Click Make Part. Notice this time Inventor didn't give us the Export Object prompt. And I'll name this part 72-2. For this example, I'm going to uncheck Place Part in Target Assembly. Let's click OK. And here's our second part. Let's save it as well. Click OK. Notice here we're not able to modify our part. If we need to modify the part, we have to go back to the original part document. Most of my features are currently suppressed in the model browser, except for Split 1. That's unsuppressed. Let's go ahead and suppress Split 1. And now with Split 1 suppressed, the other features are available for editing. Let's take a look at the Solid Bodies folder. We've got three solids here now. There's our original solid and solids 2 and 3 that we created after applying the Split tool. Let's bring back Split 1. We'll scroll down to it, right-click, Unsuppress Features. OK, now we can make some modifications. Let's right-click, New Sketch. And I'll drop a rectangle about here. Notice my rectangle also covers the back portion of the housing. 
Let's finish the sketch. Go to the Model tab. Activate the Extrude command. Let's select the profile to extrude. We'll use the Cut option. Change directions. And click OK. Notice that the cut was applied to the front housing only. Okay, let's go to part 72-2. And let's click Update. Here's the real-time update of our work. And finally, we are now finished this model. This concludes our model of how to create a gear housing.